Hello friends, happy Techie Tip Thursday. <laughs> I've never actually record, well I did, that's a lie. I was gonna say I've never recorded a video for this, but I made a video, an IGTV video of my classroom tech setup um, like a month ago. But this is my first time doing a video like this, so that's exciting. Today I want to show you how to create graphics and images in Paint 3D and in PowerPoint. Um, these are super easy to use tools to make some really fun images. And so I want to show you a couple of different ways I have used each of them. We're going to start with Paint 3D. If you remember uh, a while ago, I, a week ago, I did a post about the ketchup and pickles day that I did in class. I had a lot, a couple people ask me about um, the bitmojis I used on there. So the ketchup bit bottle bitmoji was an actual bitmoji that I found that I used, but they didn't have a pickles one. So I made my own pickles bitmoji. I'm going to show you how I did it. So this is Paint 3D. Um, on the welcome screen, you can start a new project, you can open an existing project, or you can paste if you have something copied already. So I've already gone online and found the pickle cartoon image I want to use, copied it, so I'm going to click paste, and there's my pickle. Okay, this is not the exact same pickle as the one I used, the one I used was waving but I couldn't find that one. So we're going to do this. So I moved them off to the side so that um, I have room for my Bitmoji. So I'm going to go over to Chrome. This is the Bitmoji extension for Chrome. It has all of the Bitmojis. Um, so I am going to type in ketchup because I know that's the one I want. With these, you can actually click on them. It tells you you have to right click and then I'm going to copy the image. You can also save it to your computer or open it in a new tab. So I'm gonna copy this image, go back to Paint 3D, and I'm going to paste my ketchup bottle. Okay, now this is where Paint 3D is really cool. They have this tool up here called Magic Select. Um, so you can pull in a piece of an image out and then make it into a sticker. You can move it 3D, you can do all sorts of cool things with it. So I'm gonna do magic select, and they'll give you directions over here on the right side of your screen. So I'm gonna crop down to just the face of the ketchup bottle. I'm gonna take the face of the ketchup bottle and put it on the pickle. This is so fun. Okay, crop in as much as you can, click next, and then it selects what it thinks you want out of it. You can add more, like if I wanted more of this ketchup bottle, I could do that. Um, okay, so then you're gonna click done. And look, the head popped out of the ketchup bottle. So we're gonna take this, and I just drag it over to my pickle, and then I can resize it so that it fits. It's kind of blurry, but that's okay. And there I have it. And there's my my face on a pickle. Um, now, I don't need a ketchup bottle anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and crop that out to just the pickle. Click done. Oh, I've got to move my face back. And there we have it. So, from here, we are going to go to menu, save as a regular image. Um, and then we hit save. Okay, next thing I wanted to show you is how I made the sunglasses for my giant sun on my bulletin board I just posted about yesterday. I was so proud of this. So the sun's up in the corner of the bulletin board, right? And all the stuff is down on the left. So I wanted the sun to be looking like down to the left at all the stuff on the board. But I could not find what I wanted. It was too much work to try to find what I wanted. So I decided I was just going to make what I wanted. So 
So I have these sunglasses clip art. This is actually um, from Rachel. This is part of her PDF. I just grabbed the image out, a blank, one of her blank sunglasses templates, um, so it would match all of the other sunglasses on the bulletin board. Now, this is a white outline so that students can write in, but I want filled in sunglasses for my giant son. So first thing I'm gonna do is use this fill, this paint can, select that. I'm gonna make it a black color because we have, oh, that's a custom. Here we go, black color because the sunglasses are black. I'm going to fill in these sunglasses, okay? Um, so now they're solid, filled in. Okay, now what we're gonna do is the same magic select tool we used for the pickle. This obviously, I guess I could crop this in a little bit more. There's nothing in the background that I'm trying to get rid of. I just wanna make the sunglasses into a 3D object, okay? So I'm gonna click next. It has the sunglasses highlighted. Um, on this one, I'm going to uncheck autofill background. I don't want, cause it will put like a shadow of the sunglasses or it will fill in what it thinks should be in the background. And I don't want anything in the background. So I'm gonna unclick that on this one. Okay, and then hit done. So now my sunglasses are 3D and I can take them and I can rotate them on the Y axis so they're kind of looking to the side and then tilt them down on this axis. So they're looking down and to the left um, now, if you notice here, it's kind of getting cut off. So, so I'm gonna come up to the canvas menu over here on the right side. I'm gonna uncheck resize image with canvas. I don't want the image to change size. I just want the canvas on the background to change size. So it, I'm gonna lock the aspect ratio. So when I change the width, it will also change the height. Actually, I'm gonna change the height because that's where it's getting cut off is in the height. So I'm gonna change this to, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, 800 pixels and it's gonna automatically change the width to match that ratio, but the sunglasses stayed the same size. So now we have our sunglasses, okay? And then I just kept playing with this. You can tilt it a little bit more down, a little bit more to the left. Now, if you notice I go too far to the left, it's going behind the canvas because this is a 3D object, right? So what I can do is this side, the Z axis position, and I can pull it forward, and if you look at this, it's pulling it off of that canvas, okay? Or I can go back and cut it off, right? But I don't want that, I want it forward. So, if I were to save this as a 3D image, it would be really far forward from the canvas, but I'm just gonna use this as a 2D image, so it doesn't really matter how far off the canvas it is. I just want the full sunglasses. So that's rotated a little bit too far for me. So I'm gonna pull it back a little bit, go to the left a little bit more. Okay, I can even rotate it to kind of match the angle my son is at because it was kind of at an angle. I can shrink it directionally because that looks kind of weird. So pull it up and I just kind of mess with it till I get what I want. We're gonna go to menu, save as, and just save it as an image. If I wanted to go back and mess with this some more, I could save it as a paint 3D project, meaning I can go back and make more changes later. So I'm just gonna save it as an image, and then I save it. Okay, and then the third and last thing I wanted to show you is how I made my dinosaur meteor angle of elevation and depression graphic for my notes. So I did this in PowerPoint. Okay, I have PowerPoint open. I'm gonna do just a blank presentation. And I'm gonna change the layout of this slide to just be a blank slide. I don't want anything else on there, okay? For the lines, I just did regular shapes. Line, draw it. Um, I want to make it thicker, so if you go to weight, you can make it thicker. I also want it to be black. And I'm gonna copy it, control C, and paste it, because I want the same line down here. I'm gonna insert 
shapes another plain line going from corner to corner. Again, I want to make it black, change the weight so it's thicker. And on this one, I'm going to make it dashed so that it's got that dashed visual. <laughs> okay, so that was the basic premise of my image. So in all Microsoft programs, if you go to insert, there's this super cool icons option. So we have all these accessibility icons you can use, um, analytic tools, animals you can put in there. So I was scrolling through trying to decide what to use and I passed the dinosaur category. There's four icons in there and I was like, huh, interesting. I think I was trying to find a plane because I was just going to do a plane. And as I was scrolling through, I was like, wait a minute, dinosaurs, meteors falling towards the dinosaurs. So here's the meteor. I'm going to click this one and go to insert. And then I'm going to go back to insert icons and pick a dinosaur to stick in. You can also pick from the list on the left and insert this dinosaur. Okay. Now I'm going to make them a little bit bigger just for funsies. Um, but I want the meteor to be falling towards the dinosaur and the dinosaur to be looking up at the meteor. I could switch my diagonal line to go the other way. I already drew my diagonal line. I don't want to change it. So if I click on the icon under format for images in the rotate menu, you can flip vertically, you can rotate it or flip it horizontally. Okay, in this case, rotating 90 degrees and flipping horizontally gets the same picture. But I'm going to take this and flip it horizontally so it was falling this way. Now it's falling this way. I'm going to do the same thing with my dinosaur. Go into format, rotate, flip horizontal, and now they are facing each other. Um, and then just one last thing to get the little arc marking in the corner here. Um, I went to insert shapes and I did a free form scribble shape. The arc, there is an arc shape option. I could not get it to arc tight enough for the little arc marking. What do you call that? I don't know. The little thing. So I'm going to take this. It gives me a pencil and I'm going to draw an arc. And I can make it thicker. Oh, that was a really nasty arc. Let's try that again. Insert shapes, scribble, and draw my arc. Make it black, make it thicker, and then I can take this and copy it and paste it to use. And I might as well just flip this one too. Come to rotate flip horizontally, twist it a little bit, and stick it in this corner. Eh, voila. And then I just added text boxes for angle of depression and angle of elevation. So, oh, nope, there's one more thing. Okay, so now that I have all this in here, I want to make this one big image. Because if I take this, like, I can only move one piece at a time. So I'm going to click and drag and select all of this and every single piece gets highlighted. Okay. And I'm going to right click where I have the crosshairs. Cause if you just right click out here, your selection goes away. So select everything and then right click where you have the crosshairs. And then we're going to go to group and I'm going to group all of these things. So now I have, one great big picture that I can move around. And what I did is I did control C and then I went into OneNote, which is what I use for my notes and I pasted it. And then it's just a regular image. Um, you can also control C and paste it into smart notebook and use it as an image. So there is making stuff in PowerPoint. I hope you enjoyed these demos.